Hello, and welcome to the Wednesday Mega Group. My name is Linda Sylvester, and I will be your host for the Mega Group. Our group today is scheduled from 3 to 4.30 p.m. Before we begin, let's go over some information about this webinar. This orientation group will operate in webinar format. Attendees will not be able to turn on their video or microphone during mega groups. You are counted in attendance as soon as you logged in. You do not need to follow up with us regarding attendance. If you lose connection, try to rejoin the webinar as soon as possible and you will still receive your incentive even if you get disconnected from the webinar. Okay, let's begin. Now we have a very exciting group ahead of us. Um, let's go over today's goals. Today's session breakdown. So first we'll have the opening ritual, then we'll go over um, program announcements, activation codes, group changes, and spring break. Then we'll have Friends of Tap. Next week, we'll have The Bravery. Um, we'll have a showcase from your work in the small groups. We'll have an animation industry guest speaker, Jonathan McCoy. And then we'll have our closing ritual. And now it's time to introduce my co-host for today's mega group, Lisa Clementi. Thanks, Lyndon. Super excited to be back here again with you all this Wednesday afternoon. So we're going to jump into our opening ritual together. And we've been meeting now. Um, this is our third week of this programming. We know we haven't seen our Thursday cruise yet, um, but yeah, we're in week three. So we wanted to know what is your favorite part of creating a story so far? Because we've been moving through um, some really awesome creations. So in the chat, you're going to see a link and that's going to take you to a polling uh, place where you can insert, click on your response and we're going to see it happen in live time. So what is your favorite part of creating a story so far? Because Lyndon, we've been working on um, character designs, talking about story plot, storylines, uh, setting, environment. Um, oh, wow. They're coming through already, uh, Linda. What, <laughs> and for some reason, my, my screen is not super clear. What is the blue one? That is so clearly the blue one is actually character design. Yeah. Oh, that is <laughs> that's one of my favorite parts, too. What's Great coming in for? What's coming in for the second there, the, the pink bar? What is it? So for the pink bar, we have the plot. The okay. 24. Okay. All right. All right. And then, then we have environment. Yeah. Design. Oh, what was that, Lyndon? What's between the, the red and the yellow? Um, environment design. Ah, okay. Yeah, our setting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it looks like it's kind of close with yellow there. So what, what's yellow? Yeah, yellow is actually the theme. Uh, yeah, we've been talking a lot about genre, theme. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the theme of the story. And then other, for something that doesn't fit in the category. <laughs> With four. <laughs> yeah. What would be your favorite part of creating a story, Lyndon? I know you've been in a lot of our groups. Um, for me, I would say probably character design. Um, I'm... I'm I can't really draw too well, but um, I'm always interested in, um, you know, developing a character. Yeah. Well, it looks like you match most of this group today. So, so cool to see where everybody's, um, where everybody is in our creative process so far. So thank you everyone for joining in our opening ritual for today. So we're going to head into our program announcements. All right, so for today, um, for our program announcements, if you have not yet received your incentive card, you will receive it by March 17th. That's just around the corner, it's next week. So cards will not be loaded with funds until that date. So they won't be loaded with their funds until March 17th. And you received an email with the activation codes and instructions today, March 10th. So we do apologize for that one day delay. 
And you may also look up your activation code on our TAP website using the password program one. Hopefully that um, will be easy to remember as that's part of our um, email addresses we've been sharing. So you can look up your, your activation code on our website using the password program one. And our activation um, codes, this is a reminder, this code is not your social security number or any number related to your social security number. This is a randomly generated four digit code unique to your card. However, when you go online to activate your card, you will put the activation code you receive via email in the box listed under for social security number. We know it is a bit confusing, but we promise it will work. All right, now we have schedule changes. So the deadline to change your creative engagement group day and time has actually passed. Hmm. Yeah, and now we have um, our spring break. So TAP is closed from Monday, March 29th to Friday, April 2nd. So please be sure to mark your calendars. There will be no programming that week. And you know, we believe in hard work and you know, playing hard. So enjoy your time more. Yes, definitely enjoy your time off during our spring break. So I'm sure maybe if some of you still have questions such as, um, you know, maybe you have questions around if you missed orientation or if you missed a group or incentive questions, our best resource for you is our website, www.theanimationproject.org. And uh, in the chat now, you'll see a link to our FAQ page. And that is our biggest resource. We have um, lots of, uh, hopefully all the answers you need listed there. Who to contact? So for incentives, you can contact incentives at theanimationproject.org. For schedule and attendance, contact program one at theanimationproject.org. And to make up a session, contact program one at theanimationproject.org. Great, so um, introducing our friends of TAP. So our mega groups will include a new segment called Friends of TAP, and we will be welcoming guests who have programming that might be of interest to some of you. And we look forward to welcoming our friends from the bravery to next week's group. So check out the link in the chat for more information on what is to come. Now it's time to introduce all of the work that was created in our small groups this week. Oh, and actually I think it was last week, Lyndon. Oh, last week, my apologies. <laughs>
gosh, fantastic. So fantastic. We need to see it all again. <laughs> Congratulations, everyone. And thank you for sharing your creativity um, that's happening in our small groups. No wonder why everybody chose their favorite is character design um, in our opening ritual. Your characters are just fantastic and we can totally see um, how much fun um, and creativity went into making those characters. Definitely, the characters are amazing. I love that they included um, a backstory for each character and even like the, the physical characteristics. That was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah lots of work. Yep. <laughs> And now it's actually time to introduce Kat Jalowski, TAP's Industry Outreach Advisor. Hello there, everyone. It's a pleasure to see you all. Um, I'm now calling you from an entirely different space for those of you who joined us last week. So we should have no technical issues today. Um, my name is Kat Gulachi, and I'm the Industry Outreach Advisor and Moderator. Um, I will be, uh, I'm very delighted to be able to introduce you to the wonderful Jonathan McCoy, um, who is with us today. Jonathan is a CG artist uh, currently working at uh, Lively um, in, in, in the Manhattan area. And um, we're really excited to um, have him show some of his work that he's worked on throughout the past few years, as well as share his story. So without further ado, Jonathan, we're thrilled to have you. Thank you so much for joining us. It's fantastic to be here. Thank you so much. Um, well, what I'd first love to start by, um, in, in terms of my my our little Q and A, as it were, um, I'd love to get a sense of you know what your story looked like as you entered the industry. How did you uh, how did you become interested in computer graphics? This is super interesting. Um, so I grew up in the Catskills area, um, and it's you know I I was kind of just I was homeschooled for most of my early life. My my dad would always have me and my sister watch cartoons like Tom and Jerry and stuff like that. It was always very interesting to me. But once I kind of hit uh, middle school and high school and started, you know, I, I entered the public school system and people were introducing me to all sorts of things like uh, animation from Japan. I really fell in love with like the work of uh, uh, this guy called Masaki Yuasa, a couple, uh, the, the Final Fantasy franchise, all these different like pop culture icons. And I was just like, oh, wow, that's amazing. Like, what is this even called? Like, because before it was just all animation. Then I was like, oh, wait, there's different parts of it. And from there, I decided, OK, I want to go to school for this. So I ended up going to the film and animation program in uh, RIT, which is Rochester Institute of Technology. And um, the teachers that were really, like, really awesome. Um, the T and Mark, they really helped foster like a lot of our interests. Like if we were like, oh man, I don't, you know, I don't know if I want to do like do stop motion or 3D or 2D or hand drawn. It'd be like, just try, 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 try. And it was very, very awesome. There was a great collaborative class. Um, but from there, I ended up uh, uh, maybe about after I graduated, ended up at the mill as a runner. Um, just kind of, which for those of you who don't know, a runner is kind of someone who, you know, assists in day to day studio in and out sort of things. Um, and, you know, has the opportunity to shadow artists, get to know the pipeline, get to know a lot more about like what a studio does in the day in, day out. Um, spent some time there, um, was able to transition to a role as a, a junior 3D artist. And then from there, a mid-level artist. And then after that, I ended up uh, here at Lively where I do a myriad of things from day to day. And it's, it's, quite, it's quite fun, it's quite exciting. Uh, it's a great crew here. They're really warm, really uh, inviting, just love it. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you for sharing your story. Um, in terms of, you know, your, your initial focus in computer graphics, you know, when you are obviously at the mill, um, you know, you and I were talking about this earlier and about how you were more specialized and focusing yes. on a specific area of CG. Um, could you kindly speak to that as well and, and versus what you're doing now at Lively? For sure. Yeah, 100%. So when I first, it's super funny you mentioned that because when I, um, I remember it like super vividly, when I graduated from college, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I was like, oh, no, I want to do something in this space. And I've like, but I don't know what it is. So, um. You know, our, our mutual friend, Mark Reich, he, he works there as a professor and it was like graduation day. I walked to his office and I was like, Mark, this was fun. I'm really glad I got these four years, but I have no idea what I want to do. And he was like, what could you do like day in, day out and not be tired of him? Like, I guess 3D modeling. And he was like, all right, do that. And I was like, cool. So, so when I went to the mill, I kind of, my first thing was like, let me get this, this one pillar of 3D modeling, just super 
as well as I possibly can. And then maybe, you know, as time goes on, I can kind of explore other things and get to know it. But at least if they're like, what do you do? I can say I model and I can do that really well and I can knock that out of the park. Um, the one thing that I didn't realize at the time is that, um, you know, even though you have that one pillar, it's the, each part informs the next. So when I was at the mill, I was really, really, really focused on, on three modeling. I kind of didn't really touch much of anything else. Um, you know, even though people were encouraging me like, hey, try lighting, try this. You know, my main focus, like I want to get really good at this thing. But um, moving to Lively, which is a bit of a smaller company, they're a little more uh, boutique, I guess you would say. Um, because of that, they're like, okay, um, you are, everyone here is a hat rack. We're going to wear as many hats as we can. So there's, there's not really that much room to just be, I'm only a modeler. It's like, you're a modeler, but also you have some good experience in lighting, you have some good experience in animation. Like, I think there was one uh, project that I recently did where I pretty much touched every single aspect from modeling to look dev to lighting to the final look, like color tweaking and stuff like that before it like shipped out the door. And I find that stuff like that actually helps uh, me to be even a better artist to, to understand because then I'm not just like, okay, I want this model to look good and it's only gonna look good if I do it in this program. I can say, okay, I can get it as far as I can in this program, but hey, I know this pro other program can help me. Oh, I know this other program can help me. So even if it's not exactly where I want it to be when I first start out, I know by the end, it'll, it'll get there and it'll look beautiful and the client will be like, love it. So. Yeah, no, that's wonderful. I appreciate your saying so. Um, if you don't mind, I'd love for you to be able to, I know that um, we've got, you know, some, some fun things to share with our wonderful participants today in terms of the type of work that you've done over the years or worked on throughout the past couple of years. Um, and I think you had volunteered or suggested offering uh, to share your demo reel with, the, with the, the group. So if there are no objections, I'd love for you to, uh, to do so. Absolutely. Yeah. This is uh, a lot of these stuff are my, uh, my more modeling focused things. So there's, you know, some turntables and stuff from when I was at the mill and a little after. So I'll uh, bring that up. I appreciate that. Thank you. Absolutely. so much for sharing some incredible work there and some really familiar projects thank you <laughs> and looking back I was, I was looking back and just kind of smiling to myself like I remember working on that that was fun <laughs> very very vivid memories I imagine yeah <laughs> is there a particular project on that reel that you're like that you're proudest of or a particular model that you're proudest of that's a good question um I would have to say uh the one with the uh the children and that they're shaped like money so I believe that was for like a particularly like like a charitable cause that we we worked on. Um, it was it was something about um, helping to use your money to fund like the education of kids and stuff like that, as opposed to like uh, industries or things that that fund like weaponry or things that do that are like you know negative impact on mm -hmm. on children and people in their formative years. And like I like that because it just, it looked really cool. Like it was just like these origami money like kids and there was trees made of money and desks and all that stuff. And it was like visually really cool, really fun to work on, but also it was like, oh, like we're kind of putting a little bit of good into the world out with this project. And that was like, it was like a double whammy of goodness. So I was happy about that. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, in terms of, you know, your current day to day, you know, how does that look compared to your time at the mill? Cause obviously when you're 
Um, and if you could maybe speak to your role at the mill and sort of like how large the studio is, because I'm conscious that oh, yeah. the mill is larger than that of Lively. 100%. Um, so it'd be nice to get a sense of like the, the differences between both environments. For sure. Okay. Um, so I guess I'll start with the mill. Um, so the mill is, is quite a bit bigger. I'd say what, maybe like somewhere around like across all departments. It's maybe about like 200, 200 plus. And also they have different offices. Like um, when I was there, they had Mill London, Mill New York, Mill LA, Mill Chicago. So there's all these different branches and each of them have pretty large staffs. And the way that it's broken up a lot of the times you have like a modeling team, a rigging team, a concept art team, uh, you know, you have design, but within design, you have different, like, you know, C4D, you have people who do like, you know, After Effects 2D animation, Photoshop 2D animation. And so it's very like compartmentalized. Uh, think of it like a giant, what's like one of those giant Jaegers in like uh, Pacific Rim. Each part does its own thing. The arm does its own thing, the leg. Um, and, you know, they come together in the middle. And, you know, if we have one project, we make it like okay, two people from the modeling team, we need one person from um, the rigging team to get the model set up, you know couple look dev slash lighting artists and they all come together in a team and they knock out the project. Um, while here at Lively, it's a bit smaller. Um, so sometimes you'll have, okay, we have three people for this whole project. So uh, like, let's say it's me and another person. It's like, Jonathan, you're doing modeling, you're doing lighting. Other person doing comping, you're doing final look. You know, sometimes it's divided up that way. Other times it's like, okay, um, we have a little bit more time on this, but we don't have as many, maybe, maybe we need uh, other people on this larger project we know you can do it. So just from, you know, soup to nuts from beginning to end, we're just going to give this to one person and have them crank it out. So in that way, it's a little bit different um, as far as like team size, because it can vary quite. And of course, you know, at a small studio, sometimes you'll have, you know, freelancers come in or you'll, you know, you'll be like, okay, we need like ev all hands on deck on this one project because we want it, you know, we need as much time and, and eyes and effort on this as we possibly can afford. Thank you. Um, do you have a particular, um, uh, interest now in CG that you didn't have before, being that you're working on most aspects of CG production? That's a really good question. Um, yeah, like before I was, um, I didn't really like like the aspect of like animation or rigging. Cause I was like, like, I know this is the animation project. So this is kind of blasphemous, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, I always just found it so very hard. And I was just like, okay, like getting motion to look right like, you know, you see like Tom and Jerry, or you see like these different anime characters, they move so effortless, effortlessly, like so fluidly. And you're like, oh yeah, that's, that's how hard could that be? And then you like sit down with a pen and paper and you're like, oh man, I don't look like Walt Disney. This is, this is a rectangle chasing a cube. And even it doesn't look convincing. So for the longest time, I was very much like, ah, oh, you know, whatever. But um, actually ever since moving on to Lively, like uh, um, our, uh, our boss guy, he like, he really encourages us to explore things that, you know, initially maybe it doesn't come naturally, but he's like, no, try it, try it, get as, get as good as you can. We can tweak it from there on. So it's been really, really like uh, awesome. I was able to do some animation on a recent spot. I don't think it's shipped yet, but um, it was, it was very, very rewarding to like get pointers and just be like, okay, this is good, but this needs, and here's how you can push it to that next level. And so in that way, I was like, you know, it's still challenging, but I think I can do this. And so now, you know, I'm kind of like dipping my toes in and kind of like, going deeper into the pool of, of like the animation side of things, which is actually turning out to be quite fun. That's awesome. Now I'm conscious that you are, you know, obviously our, our lives look a little bit different at this time because we're all operating remotely. We're all working remotely. Oh yeah. Um, would love to get a sense from, from your perspective, like what your current day-to-day -day looks like, you know, uh, being that we are both remote and also not sharing the same space with your fellow artists. Would love to hear your thoughts a bit on that end. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so uh, I used to really hate routine, but I find that routine is really a lifesaver, especially in times like this. So, you know, I try to get up as early as possible. Um, sometimes at seven, sometimes at eight, sometimes it's like 8.59 right before I have to be into work, <laughs> like a minute to spare. Um, but, you know, generally, you know, shower, get up and, and you got your, your, you know, for me, I try to meditate or kind of put like positive thoughts in my mind um, just from, from the very beginning. Um, because I, I find that that kind of can shape the, the tone of the whole day, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, you know, it's, it's hop into work. If I had something left over from like, the night before, like, oh, we've got, uh, you know, something to deliver at the end of the week or something to deliver at the end of the month. Like, you know, I just have whatever I need to 
hop on there. Uh, my computer is, you know, set up in my working space and I just get to work from there. Then we tend to have like meetings at about 10 o'clock just to kind of brief everyone like, hey, I want you to switch on this or hey, good work on this. We need to work on this part. And just so that, um, you know, the people in kind of at the head of the ship can kind of direct the crew members as to where we're going. Um, and then after that, you know, throughout the day, it's just working, 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 um, get up, have about an hour of lunch break. I find that it's really good, even on like crummy days when the weather's kind of gray, to get out and just walk around because it really, especially if, you know, sometimes you can feel the tension in your body when you get up and sort of walk around, you realize, oh, the world is bigger than my computer screen. This is great. You're able to kind of walk around and, good reminder. you know, yeah, it's so hard, right? <laughs> but um, it really, forget puts, sometimes. oh, oh man. <laughs> But it really puts like everything a bit more in context. And oftentimes I find that like sometimes I'm stuck on a problem. Like, oh man, this this one corner of this one bottle is not looking right. And I walk and I'm like, huh, I should hit that little checkbox in the corner. Come back, hit the checkbox, boom, you know. So I come back, you know, have lunch, sometimes before, sometimes after the walk, depending on the day. Then, you know, get back to work. I tend to finish up around uh, 6 p.m. And then after that, I try to take a little time to as of late, I've been trying to, you know, reconnect with people because I, 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 even though, you know, we have Zoom calls and stuff like that, sometimes it's, it's good to be like, oh, you know, my one buddy from college or my one friend from high school or so-and-so, you know, pick up the phone, call them and just, you know, spend the rest of the evening just kind of unwinding. That sounds wonderful. It sounds like you're, you have a nice, uh, a very healthy work-life balance. I try. <laughs> um, it, this is, this is a completely like recent thing because um, my, my, my default is because I'm, um, fairly new in the industry and fairly young, I'd say, you know, even though I'm like adding years on one year at a time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> true. <laughs> um, but like, since I'm, I'm like adding all like, you know, I'm, I keep thinking because I graduated from high school at the age of 16. And I graduated from college, like it's somewhere around like a year younger. So I still have like this thing where I'm like, okay, I got to work harder than everyone else because I'm, I'm coming in with less life experience and they have more life experience. And, and then once you get to the studios, everyone's like super sweet. Everyone's great. And just the most life to work with, but I was just personally wowed by like their level of experience. Like everyone's like, I, you know, I'm still learning. I don't know that much. And then they'll like knock something out that looks just incredible in like 15 seconds, like not literally 15 seconds, but you know what I mean? Like very, very quickly. And I'm just like, oh man, I gotta get there. So, you know, I, I as of late, I've been trying to really, you know, keep that balance going because without the balance, um, it's like the analogy of, of the, the man, the two men with the ax, they, they're like, I'm gonna do a contest. We're gonna chop down a tree, right? Right. And one of them is just chop and chop and chop and chop and chop. And but one chops, takes a little time, chops, and that guy finishes sooner. And the other guy's like, How'd you do it? Because I was working harder than you, I was going faster than you. And the dude's like, Well, when I was resting, I was sharpening my axe, you know? And so the rest is oftentimes what allows us to sharpen our axe, so to speak. That's beautifully said. I really appreciate that reference. Um, so some of our wonderful participants are starting to populate our Q&A with some great questions. So I'm really appreciative of that. Um, I'll start by asking a, a question, really great. It's actually, this one's a two-parter, Jonathan. Um, Young is asking, uh, what advice do you have for young adults looking to enter the creative industry? Um, and then adding to that, um, not to add more to your plate so quickly, <laughs> but what is something that you wish you knew or would have done when you first entered the industry? These are two very good questions, Young. Thank Ooh, you very much. Those are great. Um, I hope you'll remind me if I forget the second one, we'll answer Absolutely. the first one because that happens a lot <laughs> with me. Um, That's what I'm here for. <laughs> thank you. Um, all right. So the first part is um, advice. If I'm remembering correctly, it's advice for people who are trying to enter the field as young people, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Exactly. Um, man, I guess. I guess not to be like, well, two things I'd say. One is don't feel super stressed out if you don't know exactly what you want to do like right now. Like if you're like, man, I really, because I mean, when I was uh, starting out as a runner, I came up with a bunch of people who started out being like, I only want to do animation. And then they'd be like, eh, actually, I kind of want to be a producer now, you know, or I only, only want a 3D model. That's all I ever want to do. Or I only want a texture. Then they're like, actually lighting is really cool so you know don't be afraid to to try new things and kind of dip your fingers in, in different pies so to speak because you know sometimes you're like I only like apple pie and then you're like but I just had like the best pumpkin pie and the best sweet potato pie so I guess I like more than one pie now um, and that's completely fine and the second thing is um don't I guess don't limit yourself as to where you can start I've talked to like all sorts of people like um 
in, in this industry. And some of them are like, I started at, as a, someone in a machine room, like just delivering packages or someone who's, who's just, you know, delivering assets to clients. I move, work my way up from that. And some people are like me who are like, I started as a runner. Um, and it doesn't really matter where you start. Um, it's much easier to get from one to 10 than it is to get from like zero to one. So any sort of step in, no matter how low it seems like they're like, Hey, we need someone to like deliver coffees. And you're like, Oh, I don't even like coffee. I don't want to do that job. Like, you know, do it anyway. Cause a lot of the times you're able to like talk to people who you may not have access to like in any other situation. Like I remember being as, as, as a runner, like I would be walking around the middle and be like, how do you know all these people? And I'm like, well, you know, I was a runner. So I, I, I would have to deliver stuff to all these different people and you build relationships that way. And as much as like knowing your stuff, like you got to be a good artist, but mm -hmm. people are willing to give you more chances when they realize that like, okay, he's not a great artist yet, but I know that he works hard because I've seen him around doing this, that, and the third. So I would say, don't be scared of trying, uh, starting at any sort of level because, you know, all experience is valid. I think that's really, really beautiful set, beautifully said, all experience is valid. As a fellow runner and also a former runner of yes. the mill, um, <laughs> I think it's so important to really, you know, uh, cultivate really strong relationships. And it's a really great opportunity to get to know staff, fellow artists in the industry. Um, it gives them a chance to really get to know how you are and how you contribute to projects. Um, and um, also offers you a really strong opportunity for communication. 100%. And another thing, just, just that I, I just thought of it now, but um, don't be afraid to like reach out to people whose work you admire. Like, especially like in 2021, man, oh man, I remember, I think in, like maybe a couple of years ago when I was first starting out, there are people whose work I admire and I was like, their, their emails at the bottom of their website. I don't know if, if it's cool to reach out, but I just want to say, hey, I admire your work. Do you have any advice for someone trying to get in? Or here's my work. And people, a lot of times are just very, like, especially in this industry, are very kind. And they'll, they'll be willing to be like, if you show initiative and you're like, hey, I took your advice, I did this thing. People are willing to help. They love to see like other artists come up because artists at, at our heart, a lot of time I feel are people, people at, at the root. So that's another thing I just thought of. And there's a second part of that question, I believe, yes? There was a second question. So what is something that you wish you knew or would have done when you first entered the industry? Ooh. That's a really great question. Yeah, that's amazing. I always think about that myself. I, I guess the thing that I wish I would have known is that you're not lazy for resting, you know? Because I, I feel like a lot of the time, um, especially in, in the States here in America, like we have this perception of, um, I'll sleep when I'm dead or something like that, you know, something really like kind of corrosive like that. But in reality, it's like rest is an important part of problem solving. It's an important part of our attitude. It's an important part of how we react to things emotionally. So, you know, <laughs> I can, I can tell you the amount of times I've almost like burst into tears because like, I'm like, oh my gosh, this shot isn't perfect. And it's like, oh, but if I was well rested and I hadn't been like, you know, trying to get, you know, sometimes like the whole analogy of that, that chopping the tree when mm -hmm. the, the edge isn't sharp. It's like, you got to take that time to rest. You got to take that time to sleep. Sleep is so important as well. So, you know, sure. There's going to be days where deadlines like, Hey, we need you till like about 11 or 10 or whatever, every now and again, that's not the norm, generally not the norm, but, um, you know, but on the days where you can sleep, oh my goodness, you got to sleep. So, yeah. You definitely have got to sleep. Oh yeah. <laughs> Um, Angie's wondering, when was the moment that you knew that this career was for you? Oh, that's a good question. Um, so I, I guess it was when, this is fairly young, but I was watching um, this movie that came out like a while ago called Final Fantasy VII Advent Children. Oh, yes. And there was, there's, there's just some really cool 3D animated scenes there. And I was like, I don't know how they made this, but I want to do that. Like, period, end of story. And then... Um, Additionally, like pretty much me and my friend, we always nerd out over the newest, uh, I don't know if you guys know, but the Kingdom Hearts series, like every, like, I'm like, I don't know how they made this or how they storytell to make this as compelling as it is. But I want to do that, you know, um, I'd say just like, whenever I, I like whenever, even if there are some times where I might get discouraged or something, but the minute I see like an animated movie from like a 3D movie, eh, sorry, <laughs> 3D <laughs> animated movie or a 3D animated like game from like, a creator or an auteur or someone that I admire, I'm just like, oh man, I can't stop until I make something like as impactful as that was to me, you know? 
Right. No, that's very, very nicely said. Um, Alani's wondering, um, you know, why, why do you feel animation is important? Oh, man. It's so funny. Um, uh, our mutual friend, Paul, and he, we had just had a correspondence about this super recently. Um, it's like, as much as I'm sure everyone on this webinar has probably heard the thing where it's like, art won't, it doesn't make you money. It doesn't do anything. But like, first of all, it does. And like a lot, but at the same time, it has such an impact. Like, I'm pretty sure if I took a poll, um, how many of you watch cartoons as a kid? Like everyone's hands would be raised, you know? How many of you, yes, likewise. My hand is raised for you to be. <laughs> Same, like, it's funny because my parents didn't even really believe in cartoons, but we would watch cartoons anyway. And it was the greatest thing ever. Um, like, and then on top of that, like, I can't, I can't think of one person in my circle or people that I've known who have been like, yeah, man, I watched this animated show and it taught me something about myself. Or I watched this, uh, you know, movie and it, it really made me feel seen because like, oh my gosh. So I'd say hugely it's like representation because uh, mm -hmm. I remember like watching Aladdin as a kid and being like, wow, if that like dark skinned guy can do all that stuff, like there, what's stopping me? Like, he's poor, I have a house, like, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> it was, it's just, like, so inspiring, and it, oh, sorry, what? We, we both just said in, the same word, inspiring, simultaneously. <laughs> Amazing, same wavelength. Mm -hmm. um, same wavelength. And, um, yeah, it was just, like, seeing those sort of things, seeing, like, all the things that, like, sometimes you, sometimes, like, I tend to be, like, this is impossible, then I'll watch something, and it really inspires me, like, no, no, I can do it, I can do it, for sure, um, and it's, it, I think it's also one of the most efficient ways of, like, telling a story, getting information out. Um, yeah, I just, I think it's one of the most important mediums of our time and it's fun as heck to look at, so. Mm -hmm. It certainly is. Um, for those of our participants who want to go the modeling route or who'd like to pursue, you know, computer graphics as a whole, what are some trainings and softwares that you might uh, recommend, uh, you know, in terms of, you know, anything that might be accessible to our participants at the moment that they could, um, reference online um, such that they could pursue this kind of an opportunity? For sure. That's a really good question. So, um, oh, that's interesting. That is an interesting question. So I would say now is probably one of the best times because even if you can't, so just some caveats, right? So industry-wide, you have two kind of head honcho programs. You've got your mm, Autodesk Maya, and Autodesk 3ds Max. And those are kind of like modeling, lighting, just across the board, kind of like the industry standards, which means that if you go to a studio, they'll probably have one of these two or both installed in their machine. So when you sit down, they expect it to you to be able to kind of be familiar with that. Um, there are student versions of that. Um, and you can kind of really hop in. But a lot of the time, what I find is that if you're familiar with the concepts, you're pretty much, you're good to go on everything else. So I'm not sure if it necessarily matters where you start, um, as long as you realize that at some point you're probably have to switch to something else. Um, like I personally, I started out with just whatever I could find on the internet. Like I started with a really early version of Blender, but that gave me enough of an understanding of like, oh, okay, great. I can, like, this is what a face is. This is what a vertices is. This is what an edge is. This is what I can do. This is what looks terrible when you render it out, you know? So. Um, and even now, like Blender is kind of creeping its way up. You know, you can use Cinema 4D, you can use uh, Blender, you can use Max, you can use Maya. All of them are valuable. Um, but I'd at least say have a cursory understanding of the fact that, okay, I'm probably going to have to switch. Like if I got my, you know, cut my, cut my edge on, on Blender, at some point I'm going to have to move into Max or Maya because that's what's used. Um, so I think as long as you're, you're flexible in that way, you're not, you know, married to a specific software, but you're married to like the knowledge of what you're supposed to do. Um, so in that sense, I would kind of get more into the theory of it, like, okay, what makes an edge crisp? And there are all sorts of like, you, like YouTube University is where I, I really did my studying, you know, like get on YouTube and be like, okay, um, or, or even like uh, websites like, uh, what's it called? Stack, st uh, Stack Overflow or st Stack Exchange, something like that. It's like a website where people ask questions, kind of like Quora, and, but like for mm -hmm. all things like computer programs, you can go in there and be like, okay, like I made this uh, I don't know, this desk, but the edges aren't crisp, why? And they'll be like, oh, you need to make sure that you know you have supporting edges on either side, things like that. So once you get that theory down, 
doesn't matter what program it is. But I'd say to start, I would say if you have access to Maya, jump right in there. Because if, if you can figure out Maya, you'll be right at home. If you don't have access to Maya, that's okay. Blender is free. You can use that and then transition to Maya when you have more of kind of like uh, experience. I appreciate you referencing Blender because I, I know that that's been a recommendation to a lot of um, fellow artists that I've known in the industry. And that's a really great way to start, particularly when the software is free. Absolutely. Because, um, and then you also highlighted the fact that you don't need to be married to a specific software, which is really important because even talent that we both know who are in the industry at this time, they're constantly, even at the most senior level, learning new softwares, learning new programs. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty important to note. Absolutely. And the, and the great thing is too, like you can always go back. Like if you're like, oh, I, I tried this new software and I hate it. Hey, you still know the other one. So, you know, you're not, you're not. And also sometimes some things like I'm, I'm, I'm a, kind of a bit of a weird kid. Like I'm left-handed. The way my brain works is different. So sometimes I'll be like, I love this program for this thing, but I only want to do this other thing in this program. Cause I, that's just the way I like it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so when, the more, you know, the more, uh, I guess, the more different greens you can put in your salad, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Very nicely said. <laughs> Oh, I forget um, also that you're a big fan of puns. This is true. <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll have to incorporate one or two before yeah. we, we end our Q&A. <laughs> um, one of our, uh, our participants is wondering, for someone who wants to start animating, what's the best way and most efficient way to start? Like, what's one way to become acquainted? Oh, that's so funny. Um, I can really only give you the advice that I recently got from my friend uh, uh, Rob. He used to work at Lively, and he was just phenomenal uh, animator, just really, really on top of it. And he said, um, you really wanna start with a bouncing ball. Um, like if you can get a, a ball bouncing, you get a lot of personality of a ball. Like, is it rubber? Is it a bowling ball? Can I convey that convincingly? You can do that on a piece of paper. You can do that in a 3D software. Um, and just, just kind of getting a convincing ball bounce is like the key to a lot of like animation stuff. Um, there's a, oh, what's his name? I believe his name is Robert Williams. He wrote a book called like, uh, uh, the name slips in, but it has something to do with the 12 principles of animation. So I would say familiarize yourself with the 12 principles anim of animation because those are like really just the key to getting really believable performances. Um, and then once you kind of like, you kind of cut your teeth on that, then you can start moving on to like, uh, you know, like more humanoid figures. Um, there's a bunch of free rigs online. I don't have any off the top of my head, but you can just kind of like Google like, uh, free Maya rig or a free blender rig or a free max rig there's there's tons you know um and from there you can kind of start working on pull and pull there's this guy he used to work at um dreamworks all these videos are great his name is uh sir uh sir knights nice dad i believe his name is um but he does a lot of really good breakdowns on like how to you know have a character grabbing things how to do like push and pull how to shoot reference which is super important as an animator if you, especially if you're doing uh you know character stuff um, mm -hmm. so I guess a lot of it is, yeah, start with, with ball bounce, get that, you know, get some good stuff like that. Um, get a free rig, practice, push, pull, like, you know, basic sort of things like lifting something heavy, uh, shooting references, super important. Um, if you're doing character work and, uh, learning from people on the internet is always going to be like a winner for me. Like always go to YouTube and be like, if you're not sure, like even now, like I'm, I've been working in the industry for maybe about five, almost six years. And there is not a day that goes by where I'm not like, hey, Google, <laughs> how do I do this thing, you know, so. Yeah, I'm Googling left and right. And I really appreciate your animating the ball reference because that's that's how I learned actually when I was a runner at the mill, oh. um, that the animation route was not for me. <laughs> so one of our former colleagues actually um, showed me or helped me animate a ball and I learned for the first time and realized that uh, I appreciate the, the effort and, and uh, really enjoyed the process and the experience, but I just didn't feel comfortable as an animator. I just didn't have that skill. <laughs> I can totally relate. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also for those of you in, in our um, Zoom room or our audience, um, Gabby has kindly posted uh, a reference to the animator's survival guide oh, um, by Richard that's awesome. So um, that would be a great uh, resource and reference for you all. You know, uh, Jonathan, I'm conscious you're quite at an early stage of your career. Quite curious, just for my own interest, you know, what, um, you know, what, how you'd like to see your career evolve? What are some things that you haven't done yet that you'd like to do mm. and other focuses you'd like to have? That's a really good question. Um, I'm, I'm really, really like, I don't know if, if like anyone else, like you saw The Mandalorian, 
and then it's just like wait they did that all in unreal engine so oh, yeah. as of late i've been really really like trying to get to understand the more real-time uh, aspect of things just trying to like dig in there and understand um and also something i've been like kind of fascinated for a long time with is um the more mm, i'd say kind of like visual coding slash coding aspect things so you know, learning a bit of Houdini, like kind of going in that direction for like effects and stuff like that. Like not necessarily as a, you know, like this is my next new thing, but just as another sort of tool in my tool bit of, of being able to understand these things. Um, but past that, honestly, um, I'm still kind of figuring it out. Cause there's every time I'm like, I know exactly what I want to do. I want to, you know, do this amazing. And then a new technology comes out. I'm like, oh, wow. I didn't even know that was possible. I really got to, you know, figure that out. So. I don't know if that fully answers your question. But. That does fully answer my question. <laughs> um, I, you know, and also as artists, you know, we're constantly evolving and constantly changing our direction. That's, it's, I, you know, I always feel like it's really important to be a bit flexible and fluid yeah. just because to your point from earlier, softwares are constantly evolving and changing. And 100%. Um, another question I'd like to ask um, before mm -hmm. we um, uh, finish chatting, and this is obviously what I was asking, we, you and I spoke about this, what I was chatting to Hassan about last week when he was joining us. You know, obviously, uh, you know, these times feel a lot more optimistic than they did last year, but, you know, there are still um, moments uh, which, you know, when, when we all have our struggles, you know, it's, it can be very difficult still and very uncertain, sort of getting a sense of, you know, what's next and, and what each day will look like. Um, uh, and I'm conscious that I, I'd love, always love to hear from our artists and who are visiting us is to some strategies, coping mechanisms for, you know, us living and coping throughout a pandemic. Oh man, that's huge. And I think that's like such an important thing. Um, I have been mad grabbing at tools just <laughs> because I feel like um, they're just super, they're, you know, like you said, it's very valuable, especially in times like this, just to have um, you know, just a solid toolkit for, for checking in with yourself and making sure that you're all right from day to day. And I know everyone comes from different backgrounds, different levels of trauma, different levels of, you know, dysfunction, all those sort of things. And so it's, it's very important to, to be gracious and be very kind to oneself, especially in times like this, where I think we're all kind of struggling to some extent or another. Um, something that I, I really like to do, but I don't make as much time to do as I would like to. I really, really wish I, like, this was like, I'm, I'm like every morning, every morning. And sometimes it's like, you know, I start out and then I fall back asleep, uh, which is meditation, you know, <laughs> like a little bit of meditation. Say. Oh yeah. One of, biggest segue ever. <laughs> um, and it's, it's great because, um, you know, there's all different ways of doing meditation. That's one of the great things about meditation. Um, and there's really no wrong way of doing meditation. Like for me, I, I kind of just sit and just let my, uh, like, like, like being in a lazy, uh, what's, what's the thing, the lazy river. It's like being a little lazy river for me where I just lay back, and just regular breathing and just let my thoughts just pass me. And that, that really has a wonderful calming uh, influence on my mind. Um, I think also something that helps me when I'm in some degree of like distress, right? Um, is like the box breathing method, which is like you inhale and then you hold it and then you exhale and then you hold it and then you inhale, and you hold it. And it's just like pretty much like inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. And that kind of just resets your whole, like, especially if you're like, because most of the time when you're panicked, it's shallow breaths, it's all in your chest, you're not using your diaphragm. So when you like stop and become conscious and it really kind of helps your brain back out of that, that fight or flight ref, uh, reflex sort of situation. That's been really helpful. That's um, a wonderful uh, uh, suggestion. I mean, how, for how many seconds do you recommend holding your breath or breathing in and breathing out? Um, That's a really good question. I, I've done like, four seconds, four seconds, four seconds, four seconds. And, and, or like, you know, how, whatever feels natural. Like, yeah, like four seconds is what I, what I tend to do. Um, and that really helps. Um, I think there's variants where it's like five or a little more or whatever, a little less, um, but it's, it's, it's wonderful. It really helps, especially when you're like freaking out. Um, and um, I think also getting to uh, a knowledge of self, you know, because that's really important, I think. I think that sometimes we're so busy doing what we need to that we don't take the time to, to figure out A, what we want, and B, who we are, mm -hmm. you know? And sometimes that can keep us tracked in, like, cycles of, of you know, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this job, or I'm, I'm hanging out with these friends, or I'm, 
you know, consuming this media, but it's not even like what I want to be doing. It's not necessarily what I want to like be a part of. So getting to know yourself. And then that also can feed into like, okay, I realize right now, because I know myself, my hands are clenched, you know, my back is like this, I'm stressed. I need to get up and go for a walk, you know, and that sort of thing. Sometimes if it's normal to you and you don't take the time to like figure it out um, or like to get to know yourself, it can, it can just pass and the whole day you're uptight. You don't know, why am I snapping at my parents? Why am I snapping at my, my friends, my family? I don't know what's going on. Um, so that knowledge of self is super, super, super important. Um, and I think in addition to that, and just to kind of wrap up the trifecta, um, just, I'd say, take the time to, you know, just be very, very, like, be as kind as you're, you, to yourself as you can. Like the nicest person in your circle, the person that you treat the best, like treat yourself like that. And also, I know I said the last in the trifecta, let's make this a quadrifecta or whatever. Um, we can't go through life by ourselves, you know? I know there's all these action movies of like, I'm going at it alone, you know? And it's, it's really cool and it makes for great movie making, but we really, we really are communal creatures. So even when you don't want to, like make it a habit of reaching out to people who you love, who love you, who care about you, and just really, you know, filling up your cup with community, so to speak. Very, very beautifully said, filling up your cup with community. That was, I, I just, right off the top, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that really, you know, and I think, you know, be kind to ourselves. I think, you know, we don't do that often enough mm. to ourselves. You know, we're really great with our friends and our family and our partners, but when it comes to how we move about our day, that can yeah. be quite a tricky thing. Yeah. It can be hard to put like the eye back in time. Yes, that's another one. <laughs> another one off the top of your head too. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, that's a wonderful note for for us to end um, this wonderful conversation. Jonathan, as always, I always appreciate your effervescence, like your enthusiasm, and you offered such incredible advice, and we've just appreciate been so that. to have you. So thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It was really, it was really wonderful, like, coming on. Well, we appreciate it, and we appreciate you, so thank you. Absolutely. Um, I will now pass the uh, the baton, as I like to say, back to the wonderful Lisa and equally wonderful Lyndon. Thank you so much once again. Bye, everyone. Wow. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Um, your artistry, your wisdom, it's such an inspiration. I know we all feel it. Definitely going to be walking away with that, taking a walk um, when needing to um, help solve a problem and taking that rest when needed. So thank you. <laughs> so here we are. Um, we're going to be heading into our, our closing here already. Um, what a fantastic, um, fantastic afternoon. So in our small groups this week, we've been um, talking a lot about story and creating some um, storyboards and talking a lot about plot twists and <laughs> interesting, um, interesting yeah, twists. So in, in light of the work that we've been doing this week, we thought that we can all um, take a stretch twisting in as many ways as possible. <laughs> so right now, wherever you are in time and space, go ahead and take a stretch and maybe finding different twists and turns <laughs> as we honor all the um, amazing work that all of you are doing in storytelling um, all the way from week one to now. Um, and um, thank you everyone. Yes, thank you so much, everyone. Um, it was really great to hear about from Jonathan, as well as um, you know everything that we've seen in today's group. And um, now it's actually come to the end of today's group, so um, I actually just want to thank everyone for coming today. And um, please remember to stay connected with us through our website as well as our social media and uh, again thank you for joining the made in new york animation project mega group bye everyone all right we'll see you next time everyone have a great rest of your day bye enjoy the rest of your week